My name is Jeremy Turner for Silicon Valley Global News. I was at SIGGRAPH 2018. Now, SIGGRAPH is pretty much the top conference in the world for new media, for computer graphics, for computer hardware, and especially for VR. And this quick report is just about my experiences checking out some VR demos and some VR companies. Uh, I had a great time at SIGGRAPH, and I must say that the hardware is getting better and better. I currently own a Vive, an HTC Vive headset, which I'm using right now to see you. Now, uh, there are higher level or higher quality HMDs, or head-mounted displays for VR. There are also, uh, there also seems to be better, some better software, uh, and, and graphical renderings getting more photorealistic, or you, you could say video realistic. Uh, so I had some time to explore some of the new VR capabilities within SIGGRAPH 2018. Uh, my favorite kind of VR is actually social VR, where I can hang out with other avatars in a shared virtual space. And so therefore I was pleased to see, let me get this photo here for you. I was pleased to see High Fidelity being represented at SIGGRAPH 2018. Now, High Fidelity is sort of an open source uh, social virtual world. It, it's, uh, it was founded by the original uh, creator of Second Life, Philip Rosedale. He left Linden Labs to start High Fidelity. And this is for immersive VR users such as myself. Uh, what was interesting about going to the High Fidelity booth, uh, for example, was that I got to meet some people I'd only met in virtual reality previously. Here's someone that works at High Fidelity that also has her own talk show that looks exactly like, well, pretty much, almost exactly like her avatar. There she is right here, Jasmine. And here I am in so-called bio life or real life. Uh, she actually recognized my voice, so that was a bit uh, creepy for her, but uh, in a good way. Anyway, High Fidelity was represented there. They had some uh, kiosks here. People could go around and try High Fidelity for themselves uh, and learn to fly. You can actually fly in VR. So High Fidelity was there, but uh, a lot of the other VR booths were hosting brand new hardware or brand new uh, graphical capabilities and things like this. Uh, NVIDIA, the sponsor of SIGGRAPH 2018, has unveiled a Turing chip. Right now we have like the 1080 uh, GPU, the graphical processing unit, and uh, that's what I have. And things are pretty smooth when I go into VR without too much latency. But now they have something even faster called the Turing GPU, and it also handles AI, or artificial intelligence machine learning capabilities. Um, and so all these new booths are opening up to, at, or did open up at SIGGRAPH to present uh, the, the newest hide-mounted displays, HMDs, for VR, and also the newest uh, software capabilities and rendering capabilities. Uh, what we have behind me, well, I, we have a bunch of, I have a bunch of photos behind me, but what I have in the SIGGRAPH space here is you can see the booth for Star VR. Now, Star VR, it's, the field of vision in a Vive, for example, is quite small. I'm actually literally putting my hands around where the field of vision is. But the field of vision in Star VR is wider. The headset's a bit wider, so you can see more. Now, the hype about Star VR, Star VR is that you can, uh, it's like you're not even wearing a headset. You should be able to see everything and you're fully immersed in VR. Well, that's not entirely true. I did try the Star VR demo, and I tried different sub mini booths, which you can see sort of over there. People line up to go in those mini booths. Uh, you can see uh, little sub demos showing the capabilities of the Star VR HMD. And uh, probably not the NVIDIA Turing uh, GPU, but uh, certainly a really good GPU. And uh, so we had an Unreal booth. Unreal is a, an authoring system for VR and for video games. Uh, someone made a demo in there using the Star VR, the slightly larger Star VR headset. We also had, uh, which I think was more of a highlight for me, another booth by uh, Zero Light. They were making car ads, but they made, the cars themselves looked quite photorealistic and the reflections were beautiful and perfect and reflected the city perfectly. You're probably going to see some videos of me exploring those demos later on in future news broadcasts. Uh, but it, that was quite the experience. And with these Star VR headsets, yes, yeah, so you can see a little bit more than a Vive. You could probably see maybe this much around 210 degrees in angle they're talking about. But you can, you can see probably this much around your head. It's not entirely like wearing a, a scuba mask, but it's, I wouldn't say you, you, uh, you're still aware that you have this uh, head-mounted display on you. What is interesting, though, is that they, they did these virtual settings where they made it first appear like uh, 
the H the HMD was only covering where the Vive would cover. And then they re then I realized it was computer graphics that were doing that, and they changed the setting, and then the field of vision had widened. That was quite startling, but I still wasn't thinking it lived up to the hype as being kind of an unlimited field of view, uh, or a very natural or intu uh, intuitive uh, field view. It was uh, still somewhat confining, but better. And there's also a thing in VR, before I move on to the Zero Light demo, there's, um, there is uh, what is known as a screen door effect. That is, when you wear a headset like this, you'll see sort of mini light pixels everywhere you go. It's like looking through an insect screen door to see what's outside on the sun deck. Uh, now, Vive's uh, screen door effect is quite noticeable, uh, but uh, in darkened spaces, you don't see it. In, in lighter spaces, you totally see the, these light pixels appearing. And of course, that breaks the immersion of the VR experience. It's a bit like looking at a TV, but but everywhere. Um, whereas the Star VR headset has reduced the screen door effect. Uh, there are other HMDs that have also reduced the screen door effect, such as the Samsung Odyssey for the what they call mi Windows Mixed Reality headsets, and uh, the Vive Pro, the new Vive, which I don't have. I have the old one. The Vive Pro apparently has reduced the screen door effect. So um, I did notice with the Star VR, the screen door effect was reduced. If I was looking at something right up to something, it would it was reduced. But um, if I was looking at uh, say the sky or a, a building, it would still be pixelated. So that was a problem. Uh, but you know these problems will eventually be solved in the next few years. It was still quite the impressive demo. I got to look right into a car and see the reflective chrome. It was really cool. It was the Mars experience by HP? As you can see, this looks quite dystopian, doesn't it? They're on some kind of virtual rail, sitting in these pods, all following each other. It looks looks like something straight out of Machine Man 2020 or Blade Runner. Uh, so it was interesting. These these pods actually would, would would turn around slowly. You see these people just sitting there passively in their headsets. That was pretty creepy. All right, and then uh, here's a more novel kind of uh, virtual reality interface uh, by Optitrack. You don't really see what's going on here. But you could just walk into a space with trackers and you would have a, a mirroring avatar tracking you perfectly without uh, controllers, without anything else. And that was quite amazing, I must say. So uh, there was almost zero latency happening here. Here's a, here's a picture of some hype showing you what it can do, but you can't really tell unless you're there. Um, I did try some other smaller scale VR demos, such as one which I guess was using the, uh, looks like an Oculus. Rift or an Oculus Touch. Uh, this was sponsored through Intel and Glimpse VR, a company that is uh, out in the East Coast uh, with some universities. Uh, so I got to play some virtual basketball and softball. That was pretty cool. What I don't have a picture of here is me wearing a backpack with a, two other people uh, with arm trackers and leg trackers and uh, I can't give too many spoilers of it right now, but maybe I will later this week. I'm going to uh, Prague tomorrow, so I can't do it until I get back from there. But um, anyway, uh, that was really quite impressive and pretty funny as well. I think I'm going to share those experiences when I talk in Facebook Spaces with the founder of Silicon Valley Global News, Micah Blumberg. We're going to have a little chat in here next week sometime, and I'll, t I'll tell you that story then. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye.